All right, before we get into this, my boyfriend and I just shoveled our driveway and the sidewalks of both of our neighbors. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna drink a beer while I do this. <sighs> Mm, yes. Hi, my name is Adriana, and today I will be reviewing The Scorpion's Tale by Preston and Child. So instead of doing a non-spoiler and spoiler section for this video, I'm just gonna go straight non-spoiler. So feel free to watch this whole video if you are interested in picking up any Nora Kelly or Preston Child. I'm gonna do my best to not spoil this book as well as the previous two Nora Kelly books. So officially, this is the second Nora Kelly novel, but it is the third novel written by uh, Preston and Child that includes Nora Kelly. So the first one I have reviewed on this channel, that's Thunderhead. And the second one, which is the first official Nora Kelly novel is Old Bones. And I believe the reason that they're only counting this as the second is because they're trying to tie it in as including their main character in their main series, which is Detective Pendergast. So Detective Pem Pendergast appears in Old Bones, which is the one before this one. And of course he appears in this one, but he does not appear in Thunderhead. Thunderhead is tied in through a secondary character. <laughs> so it's all a little confusing and maybe someday after I get a, read a couple more Pendergast series novels, I'll kind of get into that some more. So I wanna start with a short synopsis of how this book gets started. It starts with FBI agent Corey Swanson who was the other main protagonist in Old Bones. And according to my dad, she's also popped up in a couple of the main series Pendergast novels. So she is going on a domestic violence call with her mentor, FBI agent. And due to her missing a shot, I don't think any children get hurt, but she, at the time she thinks a little girl is killed because she misses a shot. So that kind of t takes her into a spiral. I mean, she gets a lot of imposter syndrome. She's feeling bad about not being as good of a shot as she thinks she is, which I really appreciate. I think too many times, like these main, especially female protagonists written by men when they're trying to do the whole women empowerment thing are just a bit Mary Sue-ish. <laughs> but I think Corey is such an incredible character. I'll get into character later. I'm still in synopsis. Anyways, so she gets kind of put into a spiral and is feeling a little down on herself and is just overall not in a very good place. So then we move to a different perspective of this small town New Mexican sheriff and he's all ready to go on his big fishing trip for his day off and he sees kind of off in the distance some um, dust being blown up in this old ghost town. So he goes to investigate, even though it's his day off, he just thinks it's a little weird that somebody's poking around this old ghost town. So he goes in and finds that this man named Rivers that he's aware of is poking around in there and looking for relics and just kind of making a mess. And when he, you know, looks in to see, he sees that Rivers is actually digging up a body. So this ends up getting into a shootout situation. The sheriff ends up shooting out the knees of Rivers. And that's one of the inciting incidents. So because this ghost town is on, I believe it's BLM land, it's technically federal. So it's a federal case. So this case gets assigned to Corey Swanson and her mentor just kind of gives it to her as kind of an easy softball win just to kind of get her confidence back up. And of course, it doesn't end up being an easy softball win for her. So she ends up working with this sheriff and finds this body that Rivers had been uncovering and decides instead of using FBI resources for this kind of softball case or not really a case yet she's going to ask her friend friend she's gonna ask this archaeologist she knows to dig up the body Nora Kelly so that's how Nora Kelly gets pulled in 
So that's that's the start of the book. I don't want to get into too much more. It is a mystery thriller. So like I said, I'm going to be really, really careful not to try to spoil anything because the big part of this book is obviously the mystery aspect. Why is the body there? What happened to the body? There's all sorts of things that are weird that's happening. <laughs> the military gets involved. It's a whole thing. <laughs> so next I want to talk about characters. So of course we have our FBI agent, Corey Swanson. I really do like her. She's, she's an interesting kind of character study from what I can kind of gather and what my dad has told me from her story in the main Pendergast series, she kind of grew up in not a great home life, kind of got into some trouble as a kid. And because she'd interacted with this FBI agent, Detective Pendergast or Special Agent Pendergast, I guess, technically, she ended up, you know, going to college, studying forensic anthropology and becoming an FBI agent herself. So she has worked super, super hard to get to this level. And she just kind of gets stuck in this small New Mexico field office and is, you know, working some of these cases that start small and usually end up getting blown up into out of proportion <laughs> as is seen in Old Bones and this one. And like I mentioned earlier, I really like her because she's definitely a strong female character, but she also has flaws. Like you get to see, because a lot of this book is from her perspective, you get to kind of see her internal struggle with her old kind of rebel tendencies where she wants to go against the man and just do everything herself and recognizing that she's now a part of this larger FBI agency and she really does need to follow the rules in order to be the best special agent that she can be. And she's just, she's so intuitive. It's so cool to see kind of women's intuition put into a mystery thriller like this because she's catching up on so many little like details and like stuff's just kind of gnawing at the back of her brain that so many other people aren't even paying attention to and she ends up being right most of the time. <laughs> so I think that's really fun. And oh, I guess something else I wanted to mention about Corey is that she's only 23 <laughs> in this book, which is just mind blowing to me because like, I don't know, she's, she's very fresh, very green, and she looks really young too. So just kind of a funny running joke through, through this book. She's always being questioned as to if she's really an FBI agent because she's so young. And I think she's rather petite too. So she just doesn't really look like your traditional like FBI, grizzled FBI agent. <laughs> So it's it's pretty good. She's always being questioned and it just frustrates the hell out of her. And then of course the other main protagonist is Nora Kelly, who I love. She is a archaeologist with, what is it? I think it's just like the Archaeologist Institute of New Mexico or something. So she's she's been with the same institute for years and years and years. And she's been, you know, working her way up the up the ladder as they say and she's kind of a side plot for her is she's kind of up for a potential promotion and the new boss of the institute ends up bringing in one of her old grad students and so there's kind of a little bit of not necessarily a back and forth between Nora and the new guy, but there is a definite tension there where she thinks this new guy might have been brought in to swoop in and take her promotion from her. So that's kind of an interesting, you know, look at that as well. And it's really cool to see, even though this is only officially the second Nora Kelly book, I definitely recommend starting with Thunderhead just to kind of see where she started off. In Thunderhead was written in nine, 99 late 90s and this was released this year so there's like a 20 year difference 25 ish year difference so she's definitely you know a lot older a lot wiser than she is in thunderhead in thunderhead she i don't even think she had finished her phd yet i think she was still she was working with the institute while she was finishing up her thesis so she's definitely very young in Thunderhead and kind of all over the place. And to see her in Old Bones and this one, it's just, it's cool to see the progression and how the events in Thunderhead really affected her in these last two. 
Definitely, definitely very interesting. I really like both of these protagonists. I think they're really, really strong and I'm really excited to keep reading them in the future. I think they're excellent character studies going forward, for sure. The other kind of main protagonist we follow is the sheriff, Watts. He's from the small New Mexican town, went off to go to college, I think, and then came back and became the sheriff. And he is definitely an interesting case. And he's also very, very young, <laughs> but he's this, this crack shot that hides away all of his trophies. His grandpa ends up showing all of his uh, shooting uh, trophies and stuff. So I think that's, he's very humble, very, very Southwest. One of my favorite quotes from him is, I can tell you're a cowboy who's all hat and no cattle. And I love that. I want to start using that in my daily vernacular. But yeah, it's definitely weird for me as a 26 year old reader reading, you know, Corey and Watts who are both like so much, not so much younger. They're only three years younger, but it just seems like such a big difference to me and they're being thrust into these crazy situations. Basically everyone besides the sheriff as far as, well, I guess, I don't know. There's a pretty good mix of like just truly horrific men that Nora and Corey have to deal with. One of the most triggering things in this book for me was, like I said before, Corey had gotten her four-year degree in forensic anthropology and so she wants to help the medical examiner with the autopsy and especially performing this one procedure where she does like a artistic facial reconstruction based on the body because this body is so old it's kind of doesn't look like a person anymore and she wants to do a facial reconstruction so she can so show photos of it and she's going through this you know kind of complicated process and molding the face out of clay and the the medical examiner who's been at this field office for forever is like has been kind of a dick to her the whole time but he sees her doing this procedure and he starts asking her all these questions about how this procedure works and she's just kind of like tersely answering him because she just wants to get it done but he keeps asking her all these questions and then they are asked to present their findings to the whole office and he does the presentation and takes credit for all of her work and I'm just sitting there reading this book and I'm like oh my gosh I've been there I've been there before it's so frustrating and yeah it's it's rough and then there's another male character that she has to deal with who's on the evidence response team and he's he's a character to say the least <laughs> and I think as far as two old white men actually here I got the picture of them yeah can we here we go two old white men writing feminism I think they actually do a fairly decent job I think a lot of the experiences that Nora and Corey go through in this book I, I definitely found very relatable and fairly confirming <laughs> and I didn't find it too patronizing or condescending so I think they did a really good job I think they must have they must have a lot of women in their life who vent these types of things to them <laughs> so as far as plot the you know the in first couple chapters are really heavy. There's a lot of gunfights. There's just a lot going on in like the first four chapters. And then it definitely kind of slows down for probably about the first half of the book. So it's, it's pretty slow. If you watch my reading vlog, you can kind of see me talking about that as well, but it's, it's pretty slow and methodical and it makes sense that this is supposed to be representative of this type of investigation. And these types of investigations typically are fairly slow, following the rules, gathering the evidence. And then you get to about the halfway point and there's, you know, a big piece of evidence they find that just kind of breaks the case wide open. And the second half, is just non-stop like you are just escalating basically all the way to like the last couple chapters it is so fun it is a crazy roller coaster ride and as far as the conclusion it's it's satisfying in some parts but i feel like some threads were kind of left loose so i wonder if they'll 
if the authors will pick up some of these loose ends in in another book but don't expect everything to just be tied up in a nice little bow at the end <laughs> and i think as far as all of the endings for our characters i was pretty happy with where everything left off so yeah i covered characters i covered plot i guess setting and atmosphere i love like westerns and just anything set in the southwest like it's just such a cool vibe red rock and cowboys and i don't know the southwest is just so intriguing to me <laughs> it's so i think especially if you've ever been like an old western john wayne cowboy fan i think you'll really enjoy just kind of being in the atmosphere of this book. And of course, I think they do a really good job with all the kind of forensic anthropology and archeology span jargon. They explain things well without it kind of taking you out of the book or feeling like they're having to stop and teach you like an archeologist 101 class to be able to make you understand. They just do a really good job of weaving all of that in. So I think I covered everything that I want to as far as, you know, characters, plot, atmosphere. And so just some concluding thoughts. This was definitely a five-star read for me. I love these characters. I love this world and the air of mystery that Preston and Child put together. I think it's just such a fun story and fun ride. Like these just mystery thrillers. I just have a really, really good time reading them and I don't want to leave. <laughs> like this book put me into such a book hangover. It took me like four days to read 40 pages of the book I read after this. <laughs> it just, I just really wanted to hang out more in this world with these characters. So I, I'm looking forward to hopefully some more Nora Kelly. I'll be jumping into the kind of main Pendergast series as a whole. So look forward to more Preston and Child for me in the future. <laughs> But again, I cannot recommend this highly enough. Like I said, if you do want to get into this, I would recommend starting with Thunderhead and then going to Old Bones and then going to this. <laughs> I think it is more entertaining if you do go through with these characters and see them kind of grow up. And I guess as I, as I get more into the Pendergast series, I'll do that more with the FBI agent Corey and see kind of where she starts in that series and how she kind of flows into this one. So my thoughts might change as to the order in which you need to read these books the more I get into them. <laughs> but for now, I recommend Thunderhead, Old Bones, this one. Great little series, so much fun. Cannot wait to read about these characters more. So thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.